What's going on everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here. And moving on to the next concept, the next video, we're gonna talk about the squeeze theorem. And this is a popular concept that comes up in a lot of calculus courses. It's basically a tool that's used to solve certain limits. And so in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna explain the theorem, kind of give you an intuitive sense of how it works, and then I'll go over examples of where we have to apply this theorem to solve certain limits. And so to explain this theorem, I want to introduce three functions, f of x, g of x, and h of x. And the way that these functions relate is, let's say we got f of x. f of x is always gonna be less than or equal to g of x, which is gonna be less than or equal to h of x. And that's how these three functions are gonna relate. So basically what this means is that the y values of g of x, the y values of g of x, always have to be greater than or equal to the y values of f of x, but they have to be less than or equal to the y values of h of x. So it's almost like this is an upper bound for g of x, and then this is a lower bound of g of x. Let's say for all the x values in the entire domain. And so if we show this on a diagram, Let's, uh, let's first draw h of x. And let's just pretend h of x is a simple parabola that looks like this. Kind of a wide parabola. So this is h of x. It doesn't necessarily have to be a parabola, but I'm just going to use a parabola for now for this example. So that's h of x. And then let's draw f of x. Let's say f of x is another parabola, but let's say it's a parabola that's opening down. And so if I draw another parabola, let's say that they're both equal over here. And it comes back down like this. So let's extend this, uh, this x-axis here. So this is h of x, this parabola, and then this parabola that's opening down, that's f of x. And let's say that they're both equal at this point here. Let's call this point A, at an x value of A. And let's say that at that x value of A, they're both equal. And let's say that they have, they both have that y value, that common y value of M. So this coordinate here is basically A and M. So f of x, h of x, and now this function g of x, notice that it always has to be in between these two functions, or it could also be equal to them. And because it always has to be in between them, or equal to them, notice that at this point, it's also gonna have to have that point a and m, because it's not gonna be able to be here, can't be greater than h of x, and it can't be here, can never be lower than f of x. It always has to be in between them or equal. So no matter what, that function g of x is also gonna share that point a and m, just because the upper bound function and the lower bound function have that same point. And uh, I'm gonna erase this m for now. Let's say, um, let's say that instead of a parabola, this function g of x is some kind of complex function. Let's say it's uh, maybe like a wave that has, kind of looks like this, right? So it's not even like a smooth trig wave, it's just a crazy function that let's say we can't even get the equation for. It would be too tough to find an equation for it or we would need like a super powered calculator. So let's say that's g of x. It's some kind of complex function where h of x and f of x, those are just simple parabolas. So notice that g of x, it's always in between or equal to f of x and h of x. So always lower than h of x. All the y values are always lower than h of x, uh, but they're higher than f of x. And then at this point, they are equal. And so what the squeeze theorem does is it allows you to solve this limit as x approaches a of g of x. So let's pretend that we weren't given f of x and h of x. Let's say that we were just given this diagram of g of x and we were asked to solve this limit here. 
okay? And we weren't even given this point M. So we're asked to solve this limit here. So we don't know how to get the equation. We can maybe look at the graph and try to find that value of M. But nevertheless, it's going to be kind of tough to find this limit because this function is so complex. So that's what we're going to be using the squeeze theorem for. This function g of x here, it's usually going to be some kind of complex function that's tough for us to work with. Sometimes we may not even know the function. We're going to show that in an example as well. But if we know this, if we know this, that g of x is always in between these two other functions, and these two other functions are simple functions that we can work with, and if we know that the limit as x approaches a of uh, f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of h of x, and both of those, because they're just simple functions to work with, we know that it's going to equal m. It's approaching that y value of m from both sides, those two outer functions. If we know this and we know that, then we know that this has to equal that, right? Kind of messy. I kind of uh, went all over the place, but hopefully you get what I'm saying. Basically, if these functions are simple and we know that these two functions share this point, then we know that this function, this complex function in between them has to share that point as well, which means the limit as x approaches a of that complex function has to equal m. And so to take all of that that I just said and kind of make it into a nice sentence, this is the theorem here. So if f of x is less than or equal to g of x, which is less than or equal to h of x, for x values near a, so in that example that I did, I did it for all x values, but, but it really just has to be for x values that are near that a value where we're looking at that limit. So if this holds for x values near a, and also the limit as x approaches a of f of x, the lower bound function, is equal to the limit as x approaches a of h of x, the upper bound function, and both of those limits are equal to m, then that means the limit as x approaches a of g of x, that middle function, is also equal to m. So that is the theorem written in a nicer way. And so let's do an example where we got to apply this squeeze theorem. So let's say that we're told that f of x is equal to 2x minus 5, h of x is x squared minus 4, and f of x is less than or equal to g of x, which is less than or equal to h of x for all x, then we have to find what is the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x. So notice that this is an example where we don't even know what this function g of x is. Notice that we're not given it, but we are given the function f of x, and the function h of x, and we're told that g of x always has to be in between those, where f of x is the lower bound function, and h of x is the upper bound function, and that they could also equal. And also notice that at that x value of one, that x value we're approaching, that this limit is approaching for g of x, notice that that x value of one, what's f of one equal to? Well, f of one, if we plug in one for x, we'll have two times one minus five, which gives us negative three. And then also notice what's h of one. It's equal to one squared, which is one minus four, which is negative three. And so what that means is that because of this here, and because those functions, notice that this is the line, that's a parabola, those functions are continuous for all the x values. So what that means is that if both of these functions are negative three, it means that the limit as x approaches one of f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches one of h of x, and both of them are equal to negative three. And by the squeeze theorem, because we're given that, and because this holds, where both of these limits at that x value of one are equal to negative three, it just means that the limit as x approaches one of g of x is also equal to negative three. 
So that's sort of how to do it without, uh, without graphing it or it's just applying the theorem. Kind of a simple example, but uh, an example that I wanted to show you nevertheless, where we're not given that function, g of x. We're also gonna be applying the squeeze theorem where we're given complex functions, g of x, where just working with that limit is going to be a little bit tougher, but also wanted to do an example, actually start off with an example where we don't have to be given this function. But if we're given these functions and we know this and we know that, then by the squeeze theorem, we know that as well. And the way that this looks graphically, um, so let's graph h of x. So h of x, it's x squared minus 4. It's basically a parabola that's been shifted down 4 units. So it has a vertex at 0 and 4. And it looks like this. It looks like that. And then this uh, line 2x minus 5, it's, uh, it's actually tangent to this parabola and it intersects it at one point, and the point that it intersects it at is 1 and negative 3. So this here, let's say uh, this point is 1 and negative 3, and then 2x minus 5, let's say that this line, it kind of looks like this. Right, maybe not the best line there. So we got this line here, so let's label these. This is h of x, this is... Uh, f of x. Now the reason why I'm showing you this graphically is because these functions are kind of simple. We got this x squared minus 4, 2x minus 5, but they don't necessarily have to be simple. They could be complex functions, but if you could still get that y value by just plugging in that x value and they're both the same, then we could just apply the theorem. But because these are uh, pretty simple functions to work with, I'll kind of show you visually what's happening. So that's how f of x and h of x look, and they both share that point 1 and negative 3. And what they're saying is that g of x is always going to be in between these functions. So we don't know what g of x is. It could be anything. It could be another parabola, maybe, that has that point 1 and negative 3. Let's say that it's some kind of complex function, like a wave, like that. So notice it's always in between h of x and f of x, or equal to them. And it's actually equal to them over here at 1 and negative 3. It has to be because if it's always in between or equal to them and both of these functions are equal at that x value 1, it means that this function g of x also shares that same y value at that uh, x value 1. And that y value, it doesn't even have to be defined there. That could be a whole as well for g of x. Remember when you have a whole but from both sides it's approaching, the limit exists. So that point doesn't necessarily have to be on g of x, it could be a hole there as well, but nevertheless, as we approach from both sides that x value 1, the y values are going towards negative 3. Right, so that's kind of how it looks, uh, looks visually. So just an example again where we don't know g of x, but if we know the functions that it's bounded by, and both of those functions at a specific x value, the limits are equal, then that means that the limit at that x value 1 of that function we don't know is also going to equal that negative 3.